It's the 6-2 Pittsburgh Steelers heading to Washington to take on the 7-2 Commanders. And we've got your game preview with Steelers insider Mark Burgeon of the Believe in Steelers podcast right here on Ref the District. <laughs> well, we don't watch a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers games. Nor so we, might not be, we might not be the best people to talk about what to expect from the Steelers, but that's all right because we've got Mark joining us here from the Believe Steelers podcast. We appreciate you coming on here to rest the district here, Mark, and letting us know about the steel curtain here as uh, we have things moving along here. Sorry, taking care of a little one while we do the show. Uh, Mark, can you explain to us why you would have moved off of Justin Fields four and two? 10 and one record. I know he said one of the best things you want from a young quarterback. He himself talked about how I just didn't play well enough to keep the starter position, but could you talk to us about the move to Russell Wilson? Fellas, thanks for having me first off. And it's good to know we've got a whole ensemble of audience people, not just watching on YouTube, but in the flesh. And, uh, I hope all of you have already ordered your Marshawn Lattimore jerseys, uh, oh, after, yeah. after the news, I know the commanders are going all in. Uh, the decision to go from Fields to Wilson, it's hilarious. Uh, Trev, I don't mean to pick on you here. I heard the exact same argument except the opposite like two or three weeks ago where it's like, we can't go to Russ in year 13. He's cooked. He's in his mid-30s. His best mm. years are behind him. And he's really been the difference maker the last two weeks. Now, is that Russell Wilson turning back time and finding the fountain of youth? Or... Is it the fact that you just beat up on two New York football teams that aren't very good? Mm. So, look, I'm really excited what I've seen with Russell Wilson. I think that he got a bit of a raw deal in Denver that first year. Injured lat, uh, torn lat muscle. Nathaniel Hackett was his head coach. And then last year, Sean Payton had to do the bidding of the Broncos front office, which still just doesn't make sense to me. He's trying to get one more contract. Justin Fields, who you give up a bag of potato chips to get, he's an NFL starter. Now, is he an all pro? Is he a, a playoff caliber, a Super Bowl caliber quarterback? No, maybe not. The fact of the matter is you're paying both of those players combined less than $5 million this season. And going mm. into that and knowing that contractual value with how both players have played when they've gotten on the field this season, you would take that 10 times out of 10 versus bringing Kenny Pickett back and bringing Mitch Trubisky back and mm. bringing Mason Rudolph back. So that's mm. the thought process of, look, Russ was going to be the starter. He was a captain going into week one, if not for the calf injury, but they bring him along. How this continues to play out is what was going to be the most fascinating part of the Steelers season for this. And I'll land here. Both of these players, both Fields and Wilson, only under contract for the 2024 season. So does that mean that Pittsburgh is – let's just say everything plays out as it has so far. Six and two, let's say that turns into 12 and five at the end of the year, playoff win, but get knocked out. Will Do you think Pittsburgh will then be in the, the market for the long-term quarterback or just go with status quo because you've got obviously somebody who can run this offense efficiently – and just continue to build around him in Russell Wilson at his advanced age. I think you'd start with Wilson, but the question you ask is for what price, but this offense has looked as good as it has since big Ben was doing his thing. And I'm not talking about the twilight years towards the end there, but when Ben was rolling with this offense, it's really opened things up. Uh, the connection that Wilson has with George Pickens has been really fun to watch the last two weeks. But again, a two-game sample size, a lot of season left. If it goes well, Wilson's going to want a lucrative contract, but what is your price point? And then it's like, could we potentially bring Fields along because he's in his mid-20s. Mm -hmm. There's more upside there. You hope his best football is still ahead of him, whereas with Wilson, his best football is likely behind him. So there's a premium for quarterbacks in this league. Teams don't just oh, yeah. let quarterbacks walk on the open market. And when they do, you tend to overpay for above average to maybe good quarterback play. But it's like you're either going to have to pay a premium for above average to good or you've got to go to the draft because the best quarterbacks in this league just aren't on the open market. And if you do, 
You end up overpaying for a guy like a Kirk Cousins who has turned things around a bit in Atlanta, but we've seen year after year after year after year. It's like if you actually want to win a Super Bowl and compete in the playoffs, you're going to need a dude. Like, let me flip this back over and ask you guys. Like, are you guys already pumped that like Jaden Daniels fell you at number two and you didn't have to worry about Caleb Williams and the connection to DC and the connection to Cliff Kingsbury. Like you got to be thinking you're lucky stars here. Yeah. Mm. We're pretty, we're pretty excited. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's, and that's honestly, I was on that bandwagon at first of bringing Caleb here because of the connections that he has to his home and to Cliff. But, and then after watching the season unfold, I'm very, very, very happy with us uh, grabbing Jaden Daniels. He was my number two as well but was not my number one, but just how they both are so different in the way they perform so far. I mean, mm. Caleb is struggling in Chicago. You, Everybody thought Caleb had a better situation because he had Keenan yeah. Allen, Romeo Dunes, um, DJ Moore, DeAndre Swift in the backfield. Uh, the defense was coming on at the end of the year last year, so they were really high on that. And then everybody thought Jaden was coming to a bag of potato chips and, you know, he'd do his thing and have a roller coaster every year and everybody's new, but it's been kind of a role reversal. So I'm extremely happy that it's turned out that way. But I will admit I was a Caleb Williams stan before this. But, yeah. Well, you know what the difference between Washington and Chicago is, though, is because Washington post Daniel Snyder cleaned house entirely. You Mm -hmm. You had a blank canvas going into this year with Chicago. And look, Justin Fields, he got a raw deal in Chicago. When his first NFL start came against the Cleveland Browns, Miles Garrett had four and a half sacks in that game against an off-the-couch Jason Peters, who will go to the Hall of Fame, but he's in his 40s at this point. Mm -hmm. And he gets sacked nine times in his debut. He got a raw deal in Chicago. The difference is Chicago didn't clean house, and now you you guys might have ended the Bears' season with the Hail Mary. I don't know what you're nicknaming it at this point, but you might have just flat-out ended the Bears' season given how tough their division is. We're going to end a lot of people's seasons, I think. uh, I mean, it's just... It, it's new to all of us because obviously we haven't had this sort of success for, for 30 years. Uh, any sort of sustained success is hopefully on the horizon as well. But this is all just so new to us that it's our time now and we can start talking smack and start talking about we're getting this coach fired and we're getting this uh, quarterback benched and, and yeah. so on. So it's just a glorious time to be uh, a Commanders fan. But then you look back at on your side and with the Steelers, and you guys never have those down years, right? And Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season in what? This is year 18, I believe it is, right? How is it that he's able to do that with that group of quarterbacks that you even mentioned, Trubisky and Rudolph and Kenny Pickett, for crying out loud, is a terrible quarterback. How does Mike Tomlin do it year after year after year? Stoner, you hit the nail on the head. And Steelers fans might not want me to say this, but I'll let you know a little secret. Huh. Spoiled. Yeah. Spoiled. Yeah, and you're spoiled. He's able to make up discrepancies. I started hosting Believe in Steelers in the 2019 season. Ben Roethlisberger goes down with season ending injury. You had Mason Rudolph, very young in his career, wasn't very good, end up getting benched for the guy who is the fourth quarterback on the roster to start the season in Duck Hodges, undrafted because the Steelers traded away Do- Josh Dobbs. And yeah. they still went eight and eight. I don't know yeah, how, yeah. but they still went eight and eight. Now, the lack of playoff success is what uh, recently is what Steelers fans are frustrated about because you get in and you get smoked. There's mm. going to be a year, though, where a seven seed goes on a run because I look back to 2005 when the Steelers were the first six seed to go on and win a Super Bowl. There's going to be a year we see a seven seed do it but you haven't had the recent playoff success in particularly in the AFC. This isn't the same football we had 20 years ago where you could get by with a quarterback that just was below average, just wasn't very good in the AFC week after week. All you have to do is look across the division in the AFC North. Cincinnati's got Joe Burrow. You got a two time MVP, maybe a three time MVP here soon in Lamar Jackson and Baltimore. Not to mention the Mahomes of the world, Josh Allen. I can go through the whole list, but they had to have somebody. And it's finally like, hmm, this is what the Steelers could do with someone who is at least even competent at quarterback. How Mike Tomlin's done it, 
ball control, stout defense, winning the turnover battle. If you can win the line of scrimmage and the running game, you can control the clock. It's an old school style of football. It hasn't won Lombardi's in the last 10 to 15 years of having a defensive coach. But that's where I argue that Mike Tomlin's the victim of his own success. The highest draft pick in Mike Tomlin's tenure came in the 2019 season. The Steelers traded up to number 10 to get Devin Bush. That is the yeah. highest pick he's had in his whole run. The a level of success he's had, like, I'll, I'll leave you with one other thing to show you how dominant Tomlin's been. We had the great John McClain on our show, writes for the Houston Chronicles, covered the NFL for 50 years. He told me, and he said, look, if the Steelers and Mike Tomlin ever parted ways, number one, he could get a job in a broadcast booth yesterday. But number mm -hmm. two, there'd be one of the other 31 teams in the league that would offer him a job by sundown on the same day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. 100%. So, sitting at six and two, do the Pittsburgh Steelers have an identity of who they are as a team since you guys went through a quarterback change like midseason? Or are you still trying to figure it out because of that quarterback change? Great question. Offensively, I think you're still trying to figure it out. Can you put it together another week coming off a of bye with Russ? Because, again, the fan in me loves to see all the points scored, but I'm like, the Jets aren't very good. The Giants aren't very good. So there's that offensively. Still putting that together and like perhaps I have some PTSD from the Matt Canada era and an offense that just hasn't been very good for several years now. Defensively, though, and that's where the bulk of your salary cap is allocated. What level of the defense do you want to talk about? Dogs. And so it all starts up front. And you might say, oh, well, it's Mark going to go TJ Watt here. It actually starts A gap, B gap with Cam Hayward on the interior. Sure. And he's not talked about nationally and doesn't get the national acclaim, but all Steelers fans know where for TJ Watt to do TJ Watt things, you have to have that up front, A gap, B gap between the center and guard. But you know, if you're one technique, three technique, you have to have that up front and win the point of attack. And everything else with this defense starts with Cam Hayward and the foundation that he provides up front. Finally have the linebacker position correct. It looks like because you bring Patrick Queen over from your rival and the Ravens from a year ago, you've got a great edge rushing duo with Watt and Highsmith on the outside. Watt, you've got to bring attention to. you got to chip. you got to give help with the tight end, with the running back. He makes teams' lives a living hell off the edge. Mm -hmm. and specifically what he does is something I'm honestly surprised I haven't seen more in the NFL. I could talk about him being a magnet to the football, but how the Steelers line him up is over opposing teams, right tackles. And the reason for that is most quarterbacks in the NFL are right handed. If he can get in the face of quarterbacks consistently and get in their passing lanes, that's part of the reason he's been dynamic as he has as a pass rusher. I know a lot of times ends will get to the blind side of a quarterback, but Watt's ability to just get to the football, whether it's a strip sack, whether it's an interception, whether it's forcing a, a big sack in a key moment, there's a reason why most odds makers and betonline.ag is uh, uh, the sponsor of this show and my show. It's the reason that he's the favorite to win defensive player of the year. So we had a question come in from James earlier that I think is uh, – Pretty interesting one because it's coming from a perspective we're not used to here. James asks, do you believe teams are starting to fear playing the Commanders? This is definitely a scary team to play now. Are the Steelers, are Steelers fans a little worried about facing Jaden Daniels in this Commanders offense that has been very explosive and a defense that just got a new fresh face? Nathan, I got you. So two, two standpoints. I think league-wide the answer would be absolutely yes for what Jaden Daniels did. I mentioned Lamar Jackson earlier. I know Jaden's a rookie. He's got to be in that MVP conversation. Mm. I mean, I, I'm I'm saying this as an outside observer of the commanders, but just what he's done to where you're top the NFC East. There's still a, a lot of season left, but you have to be thrilled that you have to. So it starts from there. From the Steelers perspective, two things. So from the team, when you've won championships, it's like there's a quote Tomlin had years ago where it's like, hey, you know, Regardless of who our opponent is, it's a nameless gray face. So from the team perspective, not really. But from the fan perspective, too, we're looking at this game like 
we have pretty good success against Lamar Jackson. I've got it in my notes here somewhere where the Steelers have won seven of the last eight against Baltimore mm-hmm. and Jaden is essentially Lamar Jackson. I, I think that's a little bit of an unfair comparison to make. And I think Jaden, honestly, even as a rookie, might be a better passer. I haven't had a chance to watch him as closely as of either of you. But, you know, if we mentioned Watt and Highsmith, right? Like, I think their alignment might be a bit wider in this game to be able to keep Daniels in the pocket because that's how they play Lamar and they've had success against Lamar where those traditional passing lanes that you have as a pass rush, uh, there's an old slogan, you lose contain, you lose the game off the edge. And I think that I'm going to be really curious to see, do the Steelers kind of implement the same things and the same strategies that they've used against Lamar given Daniels running ability, which is how I would comp him to Lamar Jackson. Is he Lamar Jackson? I, I don't know. I mean, he's again, bigger sample size. No. And I actually think he's a better passer of the football. Hmm. That's my yeah, You should watch a couple of passes just from this Giants game. And, and it is the opponent, but just the precision Jaden Daniels has with the ball is insane, especially as a rookie, having only played nine games so far. Yeah, his completion percentage is well over 70%. So that's really... As a rookie. Yeah, as a rookie. <laughs> as a rookie. It's, not, it's not a dink and dunk offense either. He throws the ball downfield at a higher clip than, than most quarterbacks. But... Uh, my question for you is uh, Marshawn Lattimore here in Washington. We're not sure with the injury. We're not sure with whether or not he's going to practice. But Pittsburgh made a big splash at the trade deadline as well, getting Preston Smith and Mike Williams, one on each side of the ball. What are the chances that you're hearing as far as them being able to play, being healthy enough, and then being ready to play Sunday against Washington? I hope Mike Williams can play almost immediately because Mm -hmm. I thought he might actually even be on the Steelers before these two teams played a few weeks back because Devontae Adams, it was like, oh, I'm not going to play against the Steelers, a member of the Raiders. Oh, I'm going to play the Steelers as a member of the Jets. And remember, Aaron Rodgers took a lot of flack for saying, oh, Mike Williams ran the wrong route. And it's like, hey, come to Pittsburgh. We need help because other teams are bracketing (laughs) George Pickens. We need all the help we could get offensively because – we just don't have the pass catchers on this roster. Like, fellas, if we're playing Madden and we've got the sticks, there's not a receiver on the Steelers roster outside of George Pickens that strikes fear in your heart. So we we could use him like yesterday, Stoner, yeah. to answer your question for Mike Williams. <laughs> um, you mentioned Preston Smith as well. Um, it's To me, that's depth because uh, Nick Herbig is coming back from injury off the edge. I believe it was a hamstring injury with him. You cannot rush that. So you love TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith on the field, but you need a blow. You need to say, hey, for maybe a series or a, a, a several plays, they can get their wind on the sidelines from for key moments in the game when you really need them. So for me, that's a, a, a move to where you get more depth and he can get into the rotation to make sure that both TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith stay fresh. You hear that, Trev? Was, you can't yeah, mess yeah. with hamstring injuries. We don't even know how serious it is. It's probably not that serious. It's Devontae Adams all over again. You'll see. So, <laughs> Are you talking Mark, about today? Are you, go, La- go ahead, Lattimore's no, hamstring I'm talking about injury, Lattimore's yeah. hamstring, yeah. I think yeah. he'll be like Devontae and play Sunday. But, um, how did the Washington Commanders beat your Pittsburgh Steelers after everything you said that kind of put a little bit of fear in the commander van over here with the TJ Watts and the Smith, I has high Smiths and all that? I would go I would go to what the Colts did and what the Cowboys did and be able to run the football. The one thing with this defense is teams have been able to run it a little bit. And you can let if you could beat it's a cliche, but you win the turnover battle and you win the ground game, and particularly too, uh time of possession's big because and this is something where Russell Wilson's been a bit of an X factor the last two weeks because it was like, whoa, 30 plus points of offense. We haven't seen this in years for Pittsburgh. But to me, it's can you take them out of that with the the one weakness with this with this defense is they the teams have been able to run the ball a little bit. That's a little bit scary to me. Now, a lot of times with Pittsburgh, it's been bend but don't break. And um, even in, in that win against the Giants, it was poor red zone efficiency, which did the the Giants in. They actually did move the ball with Daniel Jones and company. But that to me, where get the ground game going and like look. I know you guys love Jaden Daniels. Don't put too much on him as a rookie. 
specifically because this defense can be scary to where playing with the lead is something that I'm not accustomed to seeing. But when you get into, hey, we must pass situations in games and you're chasing not just the score but the clock, that's where TJ Watt and company thrive because then they've got you in the situation exactly where they want to be defensively. So get, all these things are cliche. It's like, well, Mark, no dud, you know, score more points than the other team. Right. But in terms of the style of football, the Steelers style of football is something that is really timeless. Uh, if I had to put it in a sentence. Well, one last one here for you, Mark. The last time these two teams beat, no one gave Washington a chance against an undefeated Steelers team. Uh -huh. That looked pretty good with the Ben, ben Roethlisberger kind of resurgence uh, end of his career there. How do you see this game going where Washington's actually favored at home? Nathan, I want to answer your question, but wasn't that the game where it was like, before it started, Mike Tomlin was talking with, was it Chase Young on the sidelines? Mm -hmm. And he was like, we don't draft high enough to get a guy that looks like you. And he's just yeah. laughing yeah. at him. I, I think it was that exact game. It yeah. was. Yeah, it, it was. was uh, it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday game because of COVID or something like <laughs> that. Right. Or Monday yeah. afternoon yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, Nathan. What was your question? But you you brought back you brought back something I haven't thought about in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I wouldn't want to think about Chase Young either. The I wanted to know how do you think this game is going to go? What who who are you picking? Washington's favored uh, by Bet Online by point or two point five. So not really the home field advantage that you would expect, but they are favored. How do you think this game's going to play out? I hope your viewers have mercy on me, and I'm probably going to dig my own grave here and never be invited back on your program. I'll <laughs> take the Steelers coming off a of bye week. You're more well-rested. You've got time to prepare. And again, the comp I make, and it's not an exact comp, but the Steelers have played a similar style of quarterback in Lamar Jackson as good as any team in the league. I'm really curious to see what that chess match looks like on Sunday. I will take the Steelers, let's say, 24 to 21 against Washington, but we'll see. I, I cannot wait for this game because you have two teams top the division that are now vying not just to make the playoffs, but for playoff seeding, potential home field advantage when it comes to you know January football, which I know you guys are really excited about oh, yeah. just from what you've seen with this team uh, led by Jaden Daniels and company. Hey, I got to ask you guys too, though. I got you here too. Um, defensively, who do the Steelers need to look out for? Because we talked plenty about the commander's offense and what they've done offensively. From the defensive side of the ball, who do the Steelers need to know? Or, hey, where's that guy on the field? Marshawn Frankie Lugu is, is number one. <laughs> it, it absolutely. Yeah. Uh, going to be the guy who you're going to want to watch. That's, you know, Joe Witt Jr., the defensive coordinator for the commanders, has talked about him and praised him. It doesn't want to compare him to Micah Parsons, but they do play Luvu in a Parsons-like role, so he's mm -hmm. going to be the one to kind of watch out. Of course, you have Bobby Wagner, the leader of the defense. Russell Wilson's familiar with him. One of our favorite things to watch, and you'll probably see it on Sunday, is Wagner. He if if Russell Wilson checks the play and goes to an audible, Wagner's going to go up to the center. He's going to hear it, and he's going to call the defense and put them in the right spot. He's been doing that a lot this year. The linebackers, and you probably don't know a whole lot of history here in Washington in the last four years, have had really bad linebacker play. And then all of a sudden this year, it's one of their strengths, as Nathan said, with both uh, Bobby Wagner and Frankie Louvu, who's all over the place. That's the strength on the defense. We don't have great edge rushers, um, but we do are supposed to stop the run well with uh, uh, excellent tackles, defensive tackles, but the linebackers are where the – strength of the defense is right now i love how you guys get the, the cast offs of the other teams where it's like oh carolina doesn't want frankie louvu a really mm -hmm. good player cool oh bobby wagner's got nothing left in the tank uh yeah right. let me just add to my future hall of fame case yeah <laughs> 53 Pretty man modern. roster we turned over 30 guys from last year we like yeah. you said at the beginning we cleaned house well it was the salary cap crap. space too they went into the off season where they had the most salary cap space of any team so it's like new ownership new gm new coach on down and it's just like let's just paint new a money. portrait we got a blank canvas 
Yeah. Same re- next year too. We got like I think almost a hundred million dollars in cap space for next year too. So. Yeah, it's yeah. a good time to be a Washington fan right now. Very, uh, very good time to finally. be a Washington fan, it, even if Mark picks the the Steelers <laughs> over the Commanders. Have mercy. <laughs> yeah. Well, does Tom Tommy here, one of our uh, mainstays here, actually has a feeling Stoner's going to pick the Steelers too, and he tends to be our Debbie Downer here, so he probably yeah, will sure. do that when uh, we get around to our our picks. Mark, we appreciate you coming on here for Ref the District. A lot of good insight coming for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Should be a fun game and Landover. We know Steelers fans travel. FedEx, well, sorry, uh, there's a dollar in the jar. Northwest Stadium is tends to be pretty welcoming to opposing fans. However, the team is planning on giving everybody burgundy towels. So your yellow towels will be gold towels on Sunday. It'll be burgundy and gold for the entire team. So it'll be a fun matchup between these two two two-loss teams. Yeah, we do the same thing in Pittsburgh because it's Akersher Stadium now, but everyone knows it as Heinz Field. And then (laughs) before that, the old Three River Stadium. So uh, listen, it's just... The the confusion it's like it's all synonymous. It's just like just show up same time, same place on Sunday and let's play some football. Love it. Well, you can catch Mark over on the Believe Network, the Steelers Believe in Steelers podcast. So if you ever need to know anything about those uh black and yellow, the steel curtain, all their other fantastic names, Mike Tomlin led team. Love Mike Tomlin. Mm-hmm. Don't like the Steelers, hoping we win on Sunday, but appreciate you jumping on here with us on Ref the District, Mark. Fellas, thanks so much for having me. And uh check your check your tweet, your tweet replies come Sunday. I can't wait for the game. Thank you so much for having me and deal with my crazy schedule. All right. Appreciate, appreciate you, Mark. It.